The anatomical landmarks that are used in this procedure are the umbilicus and the anterior superior iliac spine. The skin incision is made obliquely in the Langer skin lines at McBurney's point, two-thirds of the way from the umbilicus to the anterior superior iliac spine. The incision is approximately 5 cm long. For cosmetic reasons, a more lower and lateral incision can be made. Retract the skin with sharp retractors. The subcutaneous tissue is separated with electrocautery until the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle is reached. Incise the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle along the direction of its fibers. The subcutis. The aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle and the internal oblique muscle. Split the internal oblique muscle and the underlying transverse abdominal muscle along its fibers with two dissection forceps. Hold the muscles aside with retractors. Peritoneum with overlying peritoneal fat. Lift the peritoneum with the forceps and postpone cutting the peritoneum until the silver sign is seen. Here you see the silver sign as a reflection of the scissor blade through the peritoneum. This maneuver can also be done with a finger. Using this maneuver, the risk of perforating intraperitoneal organs is reduced. The cecum is pulled carefully through the lower abdominal muscle splitting incision. In most cases, the appendix will be pulled together with the cecum. Otherwise, maneuver the appendix separately through the incision. Sometimes, mobilization of the cecum or adhesiolysis is needed for adequate exposure. For educational purposes, the abdominal wall will be removed now. In an overview, the cecum with the terminal ilium are visible. When these are lifted, the appendix becomes visible as well. The terminal ilium, the cecum, and the appendix. Here, the fixations of the cecum to the retroperitoneum are seen, which have to be transected for proper mobilization of the cecum through the abdominal incision. The mesoappendix with the appendicular artery is pointed out. A small part of the mesoappendix can be cut as this part is avascular. At the base of the appendix, a small hole is made inside the mesoappendix. A useful tip is to place a forceps through this hole. Open this forceps with a clamp and maintain this opening. The clamp can now be placed over the mesoappendix, precisely at the right place. The mesoappendix is cut with scissors and a ligature is placed over the mesentery. As the appendicular artery is a terminal branch, one clamp can be placed. Before continuing to the removal of the appendix.
The removal of the appendix starts with lifting the appendix to expose the appendicular base. An extra cut is placed to completely skeletonize the base of the appendix. Two clamps are placed at the base of the appendix. Then, the appendix is sharply transected. A ligature is placed over the remaining appendicular stump. If the infection causes the appendicular base to be porous and spongy, the surgeon can choose to staple the cecum more proximally, where it is less porous. When a stapler is not available nor wanted, the appendicular stump can be inverted with a burying stitch, oversewing the stump and burying it inside the cecum. Assistants can facilitate during the technique by pressing down the stump toward the cecum. To accomplish this, the forceps should be placed underneath the threads, as these are pulled tightly. Prior to closure, the wound is irrigated with normal saline and hemostasis is secured. Reposition the cecum into the abdominal cavity. It might be helpful to hold the cecum inside the abdomen with a clamp. Now the peritoneum is closed with a running suture. Prior to removing the clamp from the abdominal cavity, it is advisable not to tighten the last sutures. The clamp can then be removed while pulling the thread. In this manner, the cecum is held inside the abdomen. The following layer that is closed is the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle.
If the area was severely contaminated, the skin can be closed with a few standing sutures which is shown here. In all other cases, skin closure with a running intracutaneous suture is possible. إذا نال الفيديو إعجابك لا تنسى الاشتراك والضغط على زر لايك ومشاهدة الفيديوهات السابقة في القناة